and I got rejected from every single grad scheme I applied to. <sighs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Gosh, it feels like so long since I've just done one of these sit down videos where I kind of chat to you. I have tried to record this video once already, but I wasn't particularly happy with it. I did write down some talk points that I really wanted to hit on, but it just, it felt like it was missing something. So I think I just need to sit down and chat and ramble and talk about myself and my story first. Gosh, that sounds so cliche. Let me let me talk about my story. Uh, it's not that deep. <laughs> but just, just sort of share my experience with you guys first. And then I'll get on to the talk points that I had written down. So today's video is going to be about rejection and failure in general but also more specifically related to the job world job applications graduation graduation graduate schemes and sort of my experience with failure and my perception of it and how i've dealt with it so i think to start this story i should go back to a year ago it's actually coming up a year since i graduated but obviously that never happened because of covid so around a year ago or slightly longer i was in my final year at the university of cambridge and i was applying for jobs i'd actually been applying for jobs and looking at jobs since the summer before starting third year like i was really keen and I'd been told by a couple of people like look out for grad schemes they'll advertise early and obviously I was the first person in my family to go to university so I didn't really know what a grad scheme was when they got advertised what they were looking for what the process was like I didn't realize you had to sit lots of like psychometric tests and pre-recorded interviews anyway ramble aside so I started looking for jobs back then and I'd always had that mentality of like work hard and it will pay off everything i've achieved in life i've worked really hard to get it and my my reward for that has always been like good grades or getting into the university i wanted getting the grade i wanted in my final year and my parents had always said to me whatever you put your mind to if you work hard you will achieve it and i think this is a really great philosophy to live by i think everyone should live by this philosophy but it's not true i don't think and that's something i came to discover in my third year that was quite difficult um or perhaps not that it's not true, just it doesn't always happen instantly. The success doesn't always come right away after your hard work. But when I was applying for grad schemes, I felt that I put in a lot of effort, a lot of hard work to get onto the grad schemes I wanted. I thought, you know, I'd worked hard at university, that my employers would see these grades and all of the voluntary stuff I'd done, the societies I'd been a part of and the experience I had and they'd want to take me on. And you know, it doesn't help when you've got people around you saying, oh, a Cambridge degree will open all doors, it'll get you anywhere. So you start to think, oh, maybe it's true, maybe I might have a slight advantage. And I got rejected from every single grad scheme I applied to and it was hard. It was really difficult because I'd always thought my hard work would lead to achievements and this was the first time in my life that it wasn't and it didn't go according to plan and I'm so used to controlling everything and planning everything and organizing everything and making sure I do everything meticulously and methodically and do following those steps to get to where I want to be so for me it was a really big surprise and it was really difficult to deal with not getting onto the grad schemes I'd applied for and I think there are a couple of reasons for this and I'll elaborate on those later on in the video but for now I just want to focus on like dealing with that surprise and obviously the further into my third year we got, the further into the pandemic we got, obviously redundancies were high, people were losing their jobs, um, people were working remotely, companies didn't know what was going on, some companies started to cancel their grad schemes, stop hiring people because they were clinging on to the staff they already had and trying to work out what to do with the pandemic situation. So that didn't help, it definitely made the job world a lot more competitive and no one knew what was happening and I think that definitely contributed to my difficulties finding a job but I wouldn't want to blame it on the pandemic. I do think a lot of it was maybe my own misconceptions or misunderstanding of what a grad scheme is, what they're looking for and what I was looking for as well. So I suppose that brings me on to sort of my application process or my mindset going into the application process. I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't know what I wanted to go into. I didn't know what jobs were out there. I did an English degree, so it doesn't lead directly into a specific vocation. And I kind of hadn't really considered it throughout my degree. And then I got into final year and was like, damn, I'm gonna be graduating soon. I need to work out what I need to do, what I wanna do. And I think the problem was, 
because I didn't know, I just applied to everything. I was applying for jobs in publishing, in marketing, advertising, consultancy. What was I thinking? I just, everything, a whole host of things. Business grad schemes and just any sort of grad scheme apart from finance, nothing to do with money and maths. But anything I could sort of get my hands on, I was just sending an application off to. And I kept a spreadsheet of all the jobs I'd applied to and the status of my application, what I needed to complete. And I think, so my th I think my first downfall was not knowing what I wanted to do and just applying to everything. Because they will see in your application that you're not passionate about this role or they're just another company in your list. I think companies definitely do know that you will be applying for lots and lots of jobs. You know, in you, you might apply for about 50 jobs as a graduate and maybe hear back from one. They do know this, but you need to make them certain that that is what you want to do. You are the only person for this job. You are so passionate about it. and my passion clearly didn't come through because a lot of these grad schemes I wasn't passionate about and I was very confused and didn't know what sector I wanted to go into, what job role I wanted to go into and that definitely would have shown. I think my next mistake was not particularly knowing the application process. So as I said, I was the first person in my family to go to university. My parents weren't really that clued up on what a grad scheme was or how to apply so I couldn't really go to them for advice or help. I just kind of relied on the career service but again I don't think I made use of the career service as much as I could have done. So I'm extremely grateful for the help they gave me with my CV. They definitely polished that up, helped me to write a good CV and that definitely got my foot in the door but they couldn't have carried me the rest of the way. That was down to me and I think I wish I'd spent more time just chatting to them about what was out there because a lot of the jobs out there you might not even know exist. Like before my final year I didn't know what consultancy was for example. It's not really, it is quite a generic term, it can refer to lots of different things and it's not like one of these professions like that you hear banded about all the time like doctor, teacher, nurse, policeman, you know, consultant is just a bit vague. So that's just one example, but I didn't really know my options were out there and I could have made better use of my career service and really pinned down what I wanted to go into after I'd polished my CV and I didn't. I did see them a couple of times at least. I, I do thank myself for watching videos, listening to podcasts, reading up online about professions, but I do think maybe I just needed some more time and that's okay too. And there, there doesn't need to be a big rush to find your dream career at once. Obviously it's very important to get a job and earn your own money and be independent and support yourself straight after university or as soon as you can. But that doesn't have to be your dream profession. I think you can definitely go into a profession and sort of bide your time while you keep working out what you want to do. Obviously I wasn't that clued up on what sector I wanted to go into. I wasn't that clued up on the process. So when I got there I was like what's a psychometric test? What's a pre-recorded video interview? And I was sitting all of these things that I didn't realise you could actually prepare for. I didn't realise there were resources out there that I could practice these numeracy skills, I could practice these psychometric tests about my personality and situational judgement and I just never really heard of it. So in the first few applications I sent off, like I must have done terribly because I, I just had never seen the test format before, I didn't know what they were looking for and it wasn't until maybe a couple of months into my application process for lots of different jobs that I realised there were these resources out there and started trying to practice. But I think that definitely put me on the back foot because obviously everybody else I'm competing against will have probably known that there were these resources out there and they would have practised a lot and they would have got a lot better test results than I did. And these definitely aren't something to be feared, you can practise. I mean, numbers are definitely my weak point, but on the situational things, the more Englishy grammar based things, language based things, I think I did really well, you know, and you have to type out fake emails in some of the assessment centres you do, you get my point, but you can definitely go away and practice. So that would be my tip to you, make sure you know what the process looks like before you go into it, and make sure you know what resources are out there for you. So to make that clear, Make sure you know roughly what kind of sector you want to go into. It's okay if this isn't your dream career or your dream future, you can definitely change your mind later on. But to be passionate about what you're applying for, you need to have some sort of knowledge of it and think that's something you might be interested in and might want to try. Second point, make sure you know what the application process is like. Make sure you know what kind of tests you need to sit, see if you can practice those tests and um, Make sure you make use of like your career service who can also prepare you for these kind of application processes and tests. And then after that kind of comes the countless rejections and it was so, so difficult for me. I just kept wondering 
what am I doing wrong? And obviously now I can see that maybe it was the lack of passion, not knowing how to sit these tests, but at the time I just thought, I'm trying so hard, I'm tailoring my um, cover letters to you, I'm trying to get across my enthusiasm, I think my CV is looking in really good shape, like why is nobody wanting to take me on? And it was really, really frustrating. And when I got onto about my 50th rejection, I just thought I'm never gonna find a job. I thought my Cambridge degree would count for something, I thought my first class would count for something, maybe it's the degree I've done, maybe it's just me, and you really start to doubt yourself. So my next tip to you guys is don't lose hope, don't lose faith, keep going. And I know this is really hard when you're kind of in this rut or in this dip of not getting anything back. And the worst part is, for a lot of these jobs you don't get feedback, they don't say, this is what went well, this is what you could have improved. Or for some of them it's automated, so maybe it's it's not as tailored as if a person had interviewed you and told you where you'd gone wrong. If it's like you've sat a test and they say, you're really strong at, at your um, English skills, but you're not very strong at your numbers. I'm like, tell me where I went wrong with the numbers. Tell me like which questions I struggled on the most. And it is difficult in that sense. And I think a good bit of advice is maybe send a follow-up email. Some um, companies will be happy to give you feedback if you ask for it. Obviously they can't do that for every candidate, but if they do get one email to their hiring department saying, please can you tell me in my pre-recorded video interview where I went wrong or in my assessment center where I could have improved, I think a lot of companies would be more than happy to help you on your journey to towards finding a company for you. So the next step to dealing with my rejection or my failure was to realize that, you know, I might not be the right fit for that company Company, but they're also not the right fit for me. I did attend a couple of assessment centers and I came away thinking, gosh, that was really awful. I hated every second of that. They made me do a lot of maths. They made me do a lot of presentations. I had to interpret a lot of data. I didn't think that's what the grad scheme would entail. That's not my sort of speciality. And I think coming away and being like, wow, that company's culture just isn't for me and that's okay. I think it's so important to research the company's culture in the beginning because you might be able to save yourself time by not applying to these companies that you know you just won't gel with. I think if I'd paid more attention to the company's culture and saw that they were really data driven, really um, maths heavy and financially sort of geared, I mean as most companies are but maybe that grad scheme in particular was more towards STEM minded people then maybe I could have saved my time, my money, like traveling there and sitting in the assessment center. And I think after I came to realize this, it meant I could definitely put a lot more time and effort into the companies and the grad schemes I really did care about. And even when I was rejected from those, and I was quite upset because I thought, you know, that company really seemed like a right fit for me. It was just about realizing maybe there are candidates with more experience than I have. Maybe I need to take a year out and just gain a little bit more work experience, do a bit more voluntary work, try and, you know, maybe get an internship instead just to do six weeks intensive program, um, learning about that industry to work out if it is something I'm interested in. Contacting alumni, that is something I did do as well. I got in touch with a lot of alumni from my college to ask, what's it like in publishing? Can I just ring you and ask what your job in marketing's like? And oh, can I email you about what you do in this sector of your business? And that really helped me to narrow down what sector or job role I wanted to go into. Now, I also want to talk about why I'm glad I was rejected and what I've learned from that rejection. As I've said, I'm really glad I was rejected because it helped me to work out what industry and sector I did want to go into and which industries and sectors I really did not want to go into. And I think maybe that's something I wouldn't have known without sitting these tests or assessments or attending assessment centers and interviews. Some of it is just trial and error and it's definitely not wasted experience because even though I wasn't successful out of it, I have worked out what I do want to do and from that I've gained a bit more experience, a little bit more confidence to go into my next interview or assessment center and I can be the best version of myself. I'm more prepared for the kinds of questions they will ask because as things go, if they're asking you personality or experience based questions, they're more likely to ask you similar sort of questions like name a time you showed leadership skills or what's your proudest achievement to date or name a time where something went wrong and how you responded to that situation going wrong and you sort of can prepare for these questions more. So I am glad that I gained a lot of that experience and one thing I did realise coming out of some of the assessment centres I sat was that for a lot of them 
they'd all failed first time too. And this was actually their second time doing an assessment center for this company. They were actually a year ahead of me. They'd already graduated and they'd come back because they'd also learned from their past mistakes or experiences. So that was quite funny for me, but also quite a learning curve, realizing, you know what, maybe I will be like you in a year's time and I'll be coming back again more prepared than ever. And I think some companies do tend to go for people like that more because they've had that extra year experience and they've had that chance to learn and grow and come back more prepared. I've sort of already touched on this, but the reason I'm glad I was rejected is because it just gave me a year to slow down and work out what I wanted to do. So obviously with the pandemic, that kind of added or contributed to that pause in everybody's timelines, but it did mean I could just come home, away from university, clear my mind, be in an environment I felt really comfortable in, and just slow down. And obviously everyone was working remotely at the time. It meant I could just slow down with my applications. I'd missed the boat for grad schemes. There was nothing I could do. I'd been rejected from grad schemes, but that wasn't to stop me from applying to graduate jobs or just normal jobs. It didn't have to be permanent. It didn't have to be my dream career, but it was just an opportunity for me to try something I might be interested in. So I applied for a grad job and and that this is different to a scheme it's not like a training program it is a job and they'll train you maybe for two weeks and then you're straight into the job unlike a graduate scheme they might train you for two whole years on an intensive program instead and the first grad job i applied for i actually got and that did wonders for my confidence and my self-esteem but i've learned so many valuable skills from this job now that i feel confident to apply to any grad scheme again any job again and I can talk about the wealth of knowledge and experience I've gained from this year out and the skills that I now have or transferable skills that I've learned from this job when going forward. It's also made me realize, you know, what industries I might be more interested in. I keep saying this again and again, but I have gone out and got a bit of experience and thought this is you know the aspect I really love about this job this is the aspect that I haven't been as interested in so maybe going forward I should steer my career in this direction or step instead or ask my company can I try doing this role a bit more or is there any more work I can take on to try this aspect of the business instead and finally I think from my rejection I've definitely learned resilience and I think my motto still stands that hard work does pay off but it doesn't always pay off at once and sometimes it doesn't pay off because your hard work is misplaced or you're working hard but not towards the right thing. As soon as I realized that I was channeling my energy into the wrong places, gosh, sounds so spiritual and deep, but as soon as I realized I was channeling my energy in the wrong places, I could then refocus it more towards something I was interested in and I wanted to do. And I think that's definitely left me more prepared now for the working world, for whatever the future may hold just you guys wait and see. And I can't wait to share my rejections and my successes with you guys and let you know that rejection is totally normal. You will not, in most cases, be offered the first job you apply for. You might apply for hundreds of jobs before you get your foot in the door, before you get your first interview, and that's okay. And it's really difficult to accept that when you go on LinkedIn or Facebook or any sort of social media, or you pass by your old course mates and ask what they're up to and it seems that everybody's thriving but obviously everybody only talks about the ups and the positives and the successes on social media or to your face because they don't want to reveal to you too that they actually had to go through a really difficult process to get where they are too probably and they had to deal with rejection nobody wants to talk about their failures because it's difficult and it can feel embarrassing and it can really get you down, but I think the more we talk about failure, the more normalized it can become because after speaking to lots of friends who have been in a similar position to me, I have realized that we've all struggled this year. Every graduate who's ever existed has probably struggled with the transition from university to work and finding a job. Obviously that's been made a lot more difficult in recent years with the pandemic. So if you, like me, are, or like, like me a year ago, are applying for jobs at the moment, or you've just graduated, or you're about to graduate, or you maybe you've taken a year or two out after graduating from university and you're trying to get back into the job flow, the job application processes, best of luck, please keep going, please hang in there. It might feel difficult, you might face a lot of rejections, but oh, I was gonna say something that I think my English teacher taught me at school, but it is such a cliche. Don't hate me for saying it, but fail is first attempt in learning and this is just a learning curve for you. Try to work out what you can learn from this experience and use it to motivate you. Use it to focus 
your mind and your efforts and yeah best of luck everybody you've got this you've got this i promise bye guys